Hello friends, uh, welcome to the Anoya studio. We are going to discuss today uh, one of the very essential important concept in sociology that is culture. Uh, we will be discussing the concept of culture, its definition and characteristics. The concept of culture is widely understood as a co-synonymous with the term sociology and anthropology, social anthropology, primarily because societies cannot exist without culture. We have various societies across the world and all these societies can be differentiated from each other primarily because of their unique cultural identities. That is what make the culture of, uh, you know, concept of culture so vibrant, so widely discussed in sociology. There are many scholars who have been discussing the concept of culture. Almost every scholar in sociology and social anthropology has discussed the concept of culture. That shows the essentiality, you know, and the importance given, given to the concept of culture. Uh, one, one thing which needs to be understood, you know, uh, that there is no one culture. Culture have various variants across the societies. That is why we have a different kind of societies as well. Because we have a different kinds of culture, different variants of culture. So, there cannot be one culture. We cannot say that one culture exists in a one country or a universe. It is almost impossible. Uh, because uh, individual civilizations have their different origins, uh, different traits that, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, the evolutionary process they develop different kind of culture as well. So, we will be discussing all these issues in detail. Uh, as we discussed that culture differentiate one society for, from another and a scholar needs to ask what is that which differentiate one society from another. So, there are different kinds of things, there are custom, traditions, morals, which, which you, uh, I am very sure you must have un understood uh, by now. So, culture is essentially divided into broader two categories, that is material and non-material. And what is material and non-material? That needs to be understood. As a part of society, as a part of community, we all belong to a different kind of a religion. We may have a one religion, but within that, we too have uh, different variants of religion, you know, local traditions do influence our religious beliefs also. We have different language, food habits, we have a different economic system. Uh, for example, the underdeveloped nations and the developed nations, they have a, a, you know, huge gap of their economic development that differentiates their economic development from the another. We may have a different political system as well. So, these, these, these all these aspects, uh, when we count, are counted in a non-material aspect. You cannot see language, you cannot see religion, right. But on the other hand, when we differentiate one society from another in terms of their architectural and monumental aspects, the kind of building designs uh, we have uh, may be different from another society, you know. For example, in India itself, if you see the no northern part of India, the architectural design is quite different from the southern part of India and it is also different from the eastern part of India, especially if you see the uh, monuments, you know, architectural designs of temples, you, you find a huge difference. So, what makes these differences is also part of our culture. So, these will be counted as a material aspects of culture which to differentiate one society from the another. So, Nutshell, culture is something which is your brand, which defines you in a whole, right. Uh, your culture is yours and that, that culture is not individual in a nature. For example, if, 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 if you, you know, argue you belong to one culture, it does not mean that that culture belongs typically to you. Because you are a part of a society, you are part of a group. So, you share that cultural values with the members of the same community or a group, right. So, on the same line, another person coming from another region maybe have a different culture, but that culture is shared among that small group of people, community, right? So, that what is your brand also, you know? Uh, now, when we come to a definitional aspect of culture, uh, there are many definitions. People have uh, defined and attempted uh, culture in a very colloquial language also. In our normal conversation, in a discussion, we also many times use the word culture that my culture and your culture, you know, these kind of things usually comes in our conversation, informal conversation. 
But how to define a culture? What is the formal definition of culture? So this is one of the most important definition is uh, which is quite popular in socio anthropology is that culture is that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, moral, custom, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. So you need to uh, remember a few things. When we have this elaborated definition of culture, you see that many things are coming to that. Knowledge, belief, art, morals, customs, and any other capabilities and habits, which you are acquiring as a part of a member of a society. So it means if you are not part of a society, then the cultural traits, whatever you are acquiring, may not be a cultural trait of a society. That may be unique because individuals always live you know, in a group. Individual doesn't live all alone, right? So that what makes individuals from different from animal world as well, right? Though animals have their own culture, animal society they have on their own culture. But broadly when we define, we say that individual human beings are a social being. They live in a, a groups and community. So whatever you learn uh, as a part of a member of a society, that will be counted as a uh, part of your culture. And that uh, may be classified in terms of your food habits, in, your ter in, in terms of your language, in terms of your dress patterns itself. You see, we find a wider differences in the dress patterns, you know, dress codes among different societies. So what makes that difference is visible? The only thing which makes it visible is that the cultural difference is right. There is nothing bad and good when we uh, discuss culture. Though uh, the usual tendency is that people do consider their culture as primary and important and others culture is you know uh, 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 less in a value right. And that what we call as a ethnocentrism. But there is nothing good and bad in when we when we discuss sociologically the concept of culture. So different tastes, different food habits exist as our food habits and cultural and uh, you know uh, uh, dress patterns and codes are important. The similarly, the dress pattern, cultural codes, and languages of other people are also important. They have their own context, right? So uh, they, they, that, that what makes the cultural diversity you know uh, important for any discussion of uh, uh, sociology. So uh, primarily you can understand that, uh, that culture is a way of life common to a group of people as we already discussed and you acquire uh, these abilities uh, as a part of, as a member of society only. This could be acquired uh, by, you know, mainly by, uh, mainly by two ways. You are a part of a society, you are part of a group. And by virtue of that, your belongingness to a member uh, of that society, you, you learn, you, know, you imitate from your elders, from your peer groups, certain kind of cultural traits. And another would be someone, someone would be guiding you, right? Uh, elders are guiding you, socializing you. So this is the way you have to speak to your elders, to your peer groups. This is the way you have to dress up, you know. This is the way you should eat food. So all these things, uh, when are taught by someone uh, are, are coming under, uh, under you know, the teaching abilities. So as a member of society, you imitate culture and you learn also, right? The, both the base uh, culture, you know, uh, evolve as a part of a society, so, uh, as a part of society. Therefore, everyone in a group learn, has to learn and, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the cultural traits and someone also teach that capabilities, abilities to you as a member of society. Now, uh, it's very important to understand uh, uh, when we discuss a concept of culture, the importance of time and space. That what makes uh, we as a, you know, a, a very sensitive to the idea of culture, though most of the discussion in culture leads to a cultural, you know, ethnocentrism also, you know, culture relativities. But if you understand the concept of time and space, then you are much, much more, you know, sensitive, uh, develop much more sensibility to the understanding of culture. So what is time? What is time bound process in a culture, right? Look, any culture, uh, whatever culture means, you take your example, it doesn't exist forever. Culture has its time, you know, and gradually it undergoes a lot of change. 
for example, uh, the most important example would be uh, your food habits. Over the period of time, our food habits are undergoing tremendous changes, but it's gradual, right? Whatever was relevant few decades ago or few centuries ago may not be relevant now, but it still exists, right? Uh, uh, not in, 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 in a very prominent way, but somehow it exists, it has its traces, but you know, food habits also undergoes change. Likewise, you know, the dress patterns. Uh, during festivals, we usually, you know, dress up ourselves in a traditional uh, dress code, but not in a regular, uh, you know, routine uh, uh, ways, right? Because we have a culture, we have a tradition, and and occasionally it is manifested, right? That that what makes the process of, uh, you know, the concept of time very essential and important when we discuss a concept of culture. No culture exists forever. Culture always undergoes gradual subtle change that has to be understood by each and everybody. The present culture of yours may undergo change and the next generation when comes, they will have a different kind of culture, you know, according to the uh, uh, existing, uh, uh, the societal material, you know, and uh, uh, other political economic system, the culture also undergo gradual change. Another is also the importance of space. Your language, your food, your cultural habits, whatever comes, has a, you know, special importance. Your language may be important in that context, but may not be important in other contexts also. So whatever culture when we talk about, we do classify culture in a context itself. It doesn't have, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't lead to much understanding when we discuss, you know, a concept of culture beyond the uh, space. So, culture and space has to be understood uh, at the same time, you know. So, that makes the, the, that, that what makes the concept of culture, you know, much more meaningful for any student of sociology. For example, a tribal society has its own culture, right? But when you certainly gradually comes to a metropolitan area, that importance to culture, that, you know, meaning of culture undergoes tremendous change, that cannot be implicated into a different space. So it remains importance into a very fixed kind of locale context only. So material and non-material we have already discussed in the last slide that material and non-material aspects also to be understood in terms of time and space. Whatever material, architectural, you know, uh, cultural elements used to exist may not be existing right now because the time has passed and new advances has come into arch architectural designs and people do appreciate the older kind of designs, but you no, know, they are much more adoptive to the latest kind of, you know, development. That what happens in a urban development also, urban development designs is undergoing tremendous change. Similarly, your dress patterns, what we used to wear a few centuries or decades ago may not be uh, feasible now, right? But because the time has passed and it has undergone a gradual kind of change. So material and non-material culture of any community and society again undergoes lot of uh, changes and transformation over a period of time within that uh, space and context. So it has to be understood in relation to each other, time, space and material and non-material uh, non components of a culture. So one can discuss uh, various characteristics of a culture and n number of characteristics one can draw but in a nutshell you know broadly you can classify uh, 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 the characteristics of a culture into probably three kind of you know categories right which makes a sense right culture is universal culture is universal because culture exists everywhere wherever you find uh, the traces of a human society, you will find a culture. You cannot find a society, you cannot find a human society without culture. That is impossible, right? Whatever culture they have, but that would be called as a culture. Whether it is barbaric or civilized, modern or, you know, uh, 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 rural, uh, whatever classification you can draw, but there will be a culture and it, it has to be respected in that way, right? Culture is stable yet it, it is also dynamic. 
know what that mean means culture though have a some kind of stable uh, characteristics but it also gradually undergoes changes as we discuss in terms of our food and architectural design it remains stable for one generation for example our generation will find certain traits of our culture existing and continuing but gradually the next generation would find it has also undergone lot of changes for example the dress pattern right the the way uh, marriage used to be celebrated you know it has also undergone a kind of change uh, food habits the kind of educational aspects of our society the education is stable institution but it is also undergoing a kind of change so every institution is undergoing change and that has that that what makes the concept of culture is also dynamic in that way dynamism is not that it is transformatory it doesn't transform itself over a, over a night or a week you know but it takes many many years maybe decades also to undergo that kind of transformation and another important characteristic culture is a learned behavior right you learn as a part of society as a member of society only right if you are not a member of a society it's very impossible to learn that culture right you cannot learn the culture of uh, african tribal society only through uh, you know books right only someone told you you cannot learn that you have to live there you have to be a part of that you have to grow up yourself in that context right and space only then you will be able to acquire the traits of that culture so the belongingness is very very important part of that culture so friends culture the concept of culture as we discussed right it is mainly discussed in the area of socio anthropology and very scholars has made a different kind of attempts but the nuanced understanding the composite understanding of culture is that there are different variants of culture first and each and every culture needs to be respected every society has its own unique cultural evolutionary processes which undergo certain transformation over a period of time therefore the importance of time is very very essential when we understand the context of culture if you understand culture out of the context of time you will not be able to understand culture then the the the, the next part what we emphasized again and again is that the context of space space is very essential right cultural traits exist in a particular context though they diffuse from one society to another but the essentiality lies only into into that context only if you miss that context that would be very 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 difficult to understand for example eskimos they have their own kind of culture you cannot uh, you know uh, replicate that into a urban metropolitan area like a delhi or other kind of society the context of southern india their food habits cannot be implemented you know uh, cannot be uh, copied into the northern part so each and every society has its own culture and co- context that what makes one society differentiate uh, different from the another society then mainly uh, the you know the last part which we emphasize is material and non- material and non material aspect many scholars without going into uh, much details have defined the concept of culture as material and non material aspects of our society that could also be one possible kind of definition and it covers everything uh, whatever we acquire as a member of a society and material and non material aspects can count anything whatever comes to your mind which you have acquired as a part of society from your food habits from your uh, you know architectural designs your religion your community relation your kinship relations so and so forth anything you count would be coming under as a part of non material and material kind of uh, aspects and that is what uh, layman also uh, try to understand the concept of culture through material and uh, through the differences of material and non material aspects and material aspects of culture are much more visible right right at the outset you can differentiate that my dress patterns are different from yours it means you are belonging to a different culture uh, when we speak so we understand that you are coming from that and that particular society it means the 
a non material kind of uh, 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 non material kind of aspects of culture comes to a uh, visibility only when we have a interaction between one society to another but without having interaction the material aspects helps us to differentiate one society from another so uh, that is what make, makes a concept of culture also very difficult and complex in sociology and social anthropologies and there are a lot of people who all, always have kept the concept of culture primary to their any kind of theory of social change uh, in the society so i urge you to uh, go into a wider details of the concept of culture and read this concept much more nuancely uh, from other readings i hope that uh, you have understood the concept of culture in a very nuanced comprehensive way uh, and i thank you for a patient listening thank you